Today I'm going to teach you how to make these pillows all in one hooping. That's right, one hooping to complete the pillow, your bag, everything. Um, it, this is a pillow slip, so of course you'll make your little pillow separate and then just put it in, inside the slipper. The whole slip is made in one hooping and that includes your lace which is also made on the embroidery machine. So this is nothing is store bought except for the fabric um, that we're going to use in this pillow. What you will need for the pillow is we're going to hoop water soluble violin because we want the edge uh, to be nice and smooth and to be very thin you only want it to be consisting of fabric so that it's soft like storeboard lace. Um, so you will hoop two layers of water soluble violin. Um, you will also need a batting for the center panel so that it gives a nice puff and you will need um, your fabric that you're going to use where the quilt background is on. I'm going to use scuba fabric for the center because I want this really nice puffy look. So my center panel is going to be scuba fabric but then for my lace I really want it to um, have a vintage look so I'm going to use 100% percale cotton. Now this is my cotton fabric, you can see it's not really thick, it's normal linen but it's 100% cotton, which is very nice to work with. So you will need the size of, of your cotton will be the full size your pillow is going to be with a little bit extra because we're going to cut away. Um, I'm going to do a 10 by 10 inch pillow. So I've cut my, my fabric more or less about 14 inches just to be sure that I've got enough. My scuba, I'm just going to do the center square as it's the 10 by 10, my center square will end up probably being around eight by eight. So just cut my fabric, oh, about 9 by 9 should be fine for the center fabric and for my batting as well. You can then load your, oh, before we do that, for our back fabric, um, I'm using this like an envelope closing at the back. You can of course put a, um, a button and a buttonhole, maybe two buttonholes to make it really pretty at the back as well. So you will take your two pieces of fabric that's cut the same as the front, fold it in half and iron it flat and you can now uh, make your buttonhole before you, you uh, we're going to place it on the hoop if you want buttonhole so just measure more or less where it's going to be and place your buttonholes um, on that side. You're going to do two of these because we need to overlap them to make a closure. The buttons you can um, sew on afterwards but your buttonholes if you want that or you want to put, insert a zipper um, then I would suggest that you add your zip. If you're going to add a zip, add it before. We're actually going to, to do the back and that you will sew on with your regular sewing machine. But just to make it very simple and easy, I just decided to just make it this double fold. So you can go ahead and load the design onto your machine. You need a square hoop uh, for this project because the whole pillow is done in one hooping. It's not, we don't, not doing half turning and doing the other half. It's a one hoop design and it's done all um, at once. But you will see as we progress how um, the design works. So go ahead and hoop water soluble violin. Um, I just hooped, well, uh, two layers here. Um, and you can stitch your first step, which will just outline for you uh, the center square. On top of that center square, I'm going to use 5 of 5 spray and lightly spray and then add my batting to cover the whole area. I'm just using a thin quilter's batting, not necessary for a very thick batting. I'm going to spray again and I'm going to add my scuba fabric on top. You can now take it back to this uh, embroidery machine where um, this square will be tacked down with a zigzag stitch. After this zigzag step completed, you can cut away the extra fabric around the, the square. And you can now go ahead and stitch the design that's the, your background that is your quilting. Um, it will be this background on the, on the edge. I'm just using one of the other patterns uh, that's a bit uh, quicker in stitching for this video tutorial uh, to save us some, some time. 
as we are going to do three tutorials in one today to show you how to do the pillow, how to do the Nordic heart and also how to, to do the lace. After the quilting is finished, stitching, you can now add any design you wish on top. Um, if you want a little picture on top, it's fine. If you want wording, you can just stitch it on top um, at this stage. Um, or you can put your Nordic heart on now. Um, just whatever you want to put on the center of your little pillow um, is what you at this stage what you will add. After you've done that, you will go back to this file and just forward it again to, this is your um, third step, so just forward again to your third step and then you can just continue with your, with your pillow. After the quilting is done, your next step you will see is an outline, outlining the, the frill that's going around the pillow. This is just a guide so we know where to place our fabric. Um, you will now take your bigger piece that you've cut, the, the size of your pillow, and you can spray fiber pile spray on the edge just to secure your fabric. Don't spray in the middle because you don't want anything sticky there at the moment. And just place your fabric over this area and smoothing it out. So this is my cotton fabric I'm placing down now, that's going to, to be my frill. Securing it nicely, you can add pins if you wish, if you feel it's not secure enough for you. I think the fiber fast spray is, is fine. Uh, you can take it back to the embroidery machine where your lace will stitch now. Don't worry, we covered this up, um, it will all make sense in a bit. We're going to cut away the center fabric after the lace fill is done. Uh, the reason I'm using a big piece of fabric instead of doing the lace first is because we need a, quite a steady base to, to do our lace on to make sure that everything uh, meets up where it should. After we placed our fabric, uh, you went ahead and you stitched the next step, which is the zigzag to tuck down this fabric in place. And we're now going to trim the fabric against the, the zigzag stitches as close as possible without cutting the stitches, of course. to the machine and we're going to stitch the lace on top of the fabric now. The lace is now complete and we're ready to stitch the next step which will be our outline of the center area so that we can remove the center fabric. After this exact step is complete we're ready to cut away the center fabric. Push in your scissors and make a small hole and start cutting the top fabric away. This is the front complete of, of our pillow, but we need to add our fold for the back at this stage. So before you continue, you can take your two pieces of fabric that we folded previously. You're going to turn your hoop wrong way facing you. And we're going to add it to the back. So I'm just going to spray with five of our spray. And then my first half, I'm going to place over about halfway with the fold towards the middle. And I'm going to do the same just here where it overlaps. I'm going to spray a little bit five of five. And I'm going to make sure that it overlaps about two inches, one and a half to two inches that it overlaps so that when you, your pillow is inside that it closes properly and it doesn't pull open. If there's any loose fabric at the back, you can just secure it with fiber fast spray because you're going to turn the loop now so that everything stays put. If you need to, you can add some pins to just make sure that it stays in place. You're now going to put it back in the machine and we're going to stitch the next step, uh, which will be a zigzag step, so that it, we can um, have time to trim away the, the fabric at the back. 
Our back fabric is now secure. So you can go ahead now and trim away the extra fabric. And we're now going back to the embroidery machine to do the final step, which is your satin to finish off the raw edges on both sides of your hoop. After the step is complete, your pillow casing is ready to remove from the hoop. You can see at the back there's your envelope and there's your front. So we're going to remove it from the hoop. I'm, while it's in the hoop, I'm just going to cut it loose so that I can get as close to the stitches as possible. cut it loose you can now go and rinse it to get rid of all the water soluble while we're waiting for the pillow to be washed and dried um, I'm going to show you how we are uh, to do the Nordic heart um, for this um, tutorial I'm just going to I just hooped fabric and stabilizer so I'm just going to do it on fabric but if you've done the the pillow and you don't want to do it on a quilt background of course you'll do your quilt background first and then you'll add your heart on top. You need very small pieces of fabric. So you need two pieces of one color and two pieces of another color because we're doing alternate blocks. So let's get started. You can put your design on your machine and stitch the first step that will show you where to place the fabric. After your straight stitch stitched, because this is quilting and I wanted to have a nice puffy look, I'm going to add a layer of batting. And then I'm going to add my pieces of fabric that goes on the top. Now you can back your machine because the, the batting is actually hiding where, where the fabric goes. So I'm just going to back my machine one step and just stitch that outline again on my batting so that I can see exactly where to place the pieces of fabric. I stitched the straight lines onto the batting and I'm now going to add my fabric on top of um, this, this guide. Just spraying with fiber fast spray and adding my fabric on top. And I'm going to put another fabric on this side. Then join in the middle. And I'm now going to take it back to my machine and stitch the tack down stitches. Tack down stitches have been placed and I'm going to cut away the extra fabric. I'm not going to cut the batting, only the fabric. And again back to the sewing machine or the, uh, the embroidery machine to stitch the next area to be filled with fabric. As you can see these five squares is to be filled next. So you can go ahead and add your fabric of choice over those five blocks. Just lightly going to spray not too much and place my fabric over those blocks to the embroidery machine to tack down and then we'll cut away the extra. Tack down stitches is complete. Let's trim away the extra. trimmed away and we know now that is the next area but you can go ahead and stitch the outline if you want or you can um, place your fabric directly on top and just go ahead and stitch the next two steps 
after you trimmed away the next fabric, you are ready now to, to complete. Uh, but at this stage, you can actually cut away the, the batting around the shape. Now you can stitch the next step, which is your satin. Okay, and I'll be back after that to show you the quilting. The satin stitch is just completed, so you can now go ahead and do the, the final step, which will be your quilting on top. Well done, all quilting in place, beautifully finished. Uh, you can, like I did uh, this one directly onto fabric, or you can um, stitch it onto uh, water soluble and then just cut it out and rinse it. And it can be a beautiful um, mug rug, or you can make it a pot stand. Um, you can even make it an iron on patch if you want. Uh, so this after you washed your place and it's dry, you'll see it's, it's nice and soft. And we're now ready to make the holes. You can see I already started making holes. So I'll just show you how I do that. I use this punch pliers. It's available from most hardware stores. It can do different sizes of holes. You just turn the wheel to the one you, you want to use. Um, these holes were designed for not the smallest size, but the size just up from that. So that's the smallest, so the size just up for, for, from that you will use to punch your holes. How you do that, you just place your where you want the hole and then just press the two together. And you might hear a click sound as it cuts the fabric. And all your holes are cut and you can now insert your, your pillow inside your, your little casing. I stuffed the little pillow and I just used some fabric glue and some half pulls and stuck them in the, the center of each dot to make it really something special. So we've completed this quilted heart today. We've completed this pillow. And you've also done that below. I will now show you how to do continuous lace um, using the lace pieces that, that you will find in the set. Um, if you want to make long strips, how you will, will join them. Everybody, in today's tutorial, I want to teach you how to make eyelet lace. Uh, you can make it with the eyelets or without the eyelets. In this case, I haven't um, cut the holes in yet. Um, these pillows are made using the lace that, are, that we're going to make today. This is storeboard lace, as you can see. And then this is the lace that we are making. So although the holes is not cut yet, you can see it's very similar to, to storeboard lace. You can experiment with different fabrics. Um, the storeboard lace is a very, very thin cotton. Um, I only had percale cotton, so I used that. It's 100% uh, cotton linen. It works very well and it looks beautiful. But do experiment with um, various um, cotton fabrics. I wouldn't recommend a polyester as there's too much stretch in it. Uh, so a, a cotton fabric should be fine to use. A thin cotton fabric, not a very thick one for best results. Now let's see what we need uh, to make this, this project happen. First of all, you're going to need water-soluble Vilene. Now uh, Vilene is a, a non-woven um, water-soluble stabilizer, so it, it will dissolve in cold water or hot water. And I use two layers at a time so that we have plenty of um, stability for the design as there is a few stitches being placed on it. So you can go ahead and hoop your two layers of water soluble. The other thing you will need to do is to print a template of your design. 
I prefer to print my templates on clear transparency um, sheets. You get them for inkjet printers. You can also print on any um, paper that has a little bit of a, a see-through look, um, even if it's, it's like a, almost a wax paper where you can just faintly see, or trace paper where you can see at least through where your placement is. The clear plastic just gives me a better view of what is going to happen. So if you can find these transparencies, it's from the very old transparency machines, projectors, that they used to, to use in conferences. Um, so I'm not sure if, it, if it's still sold everywhere. Uh, we do get them occasionally in South Africa in our stationery stores. So um, or find out from Penguin. Uh, the, that's the make. Um, I'll just show you the package. These are the transparencies I use, transparency sheets. So you can try and maybe find it locally in your, your country. You get them in packs of, I think this is 50 in a pack. Yes, 50 sheets in a pack. Uh, so they will last you quite a long time. The transparencies also, once you've printed them, you can file them in a file because they are fairly indestructible. They won't damage very quickly. So you can just file them and use them over and over and over again. The other thing you will need if you want to make the eyelets is an eyelet tool. These are obtainable from uh, many of your craft stores or um, in our case we get them in, in hardware stores as well. They got this little turn wheel with different holes that you size holes that you can make. I've designed the lace to uh, be used with the second um, setting. So it's not the very tiny one, it's just the one just next to it that we're going to cut our lace with. Uh, you will see it's got a little tapered edge. So although it might look to you as if you're going to cut your, your threads while you're doing it, um, because it's tapered inward, it actually pulls the stitches in and it gives you a good result and a perfect little hole, as you can see from there. And so, but I'll show you later on how we, we complete the lace. So get yourself some of these punch pliers. Um, so long if, you've, if you like the eyelet look of, of the whole design. I will be designing more edgings, uh, so do look back um, at the website from time to time. First of all, after you hooked your stabilizer, I would like for you to mark your center onto your water soluble. I'm using these water erasable markers, so they will just wash away after we're done with our project. We need to wash it anyway to get rid of the soluble and your pen marking will wash out as well. So I've just marked my center um, points on my stabilizer and on my template what I've done is I've um, cut or punched the hole through using my pliers through the center and also through where I want to, uh, where my dis uh, lace is going to meet. So if you look on the template I'm just going to place it on the white so you can see clearly. The lace will join in that area and in that area where the, there's a blue line on your template. If you don't know how to print templates, just look at one of my other videos where I explained how to use Wilcom True Sizer to print out your templates. You might need to um, play a little bit with your settings to, so to ensure that you do get your center markings on your template. Like I've got here, you can see the red line there. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, it's very faint. Uh, I've got the red line which is the center point and then the blue line is actually where my start and my end points is of my design, where, where it will start stitching and where it will stop stitching. So I've punched the hole there where it starts, where it ends and also in my center point. So we are not going to line up the center line with the center of the design. I actually want to line up the start and the end points with the center of, of my design. So I've gone ahead and placed the line matching up my horizontal center line. And I've actually lined up where the, the start of the design and the end of the design will be over there and over the bottom that I'm going to line up with my center line that I drew on my stabilizer. 
I then going to take my water erasable marker and the center point of where the machine will, when you switch your machine on, it's automatic in the center, center area. Um, that is for your domestic machines. If you've got a multi-needle, you will be able to move your design, uh, your machine to where you actually want the design to, to start. So you will just move your your needle point to that area and you will just start stitching. So the multi-needles is, is a little bit easier to use than your um, domestic embroidery machines. For your domestic machines, because many of you have those, I'm just doing this tutorial on that. So where your line will be, your um, meeting line, your, your start and your end will be, that you will line up with your center vertical line on your stabilizer. You will see your center of the actual design will be offset to your center where you drew. So I'm just marking that center point. That's why I punched the hole in there. I'm also going to just mark my start and my end of my design. So now you will see three markings on my stabilizer, three little dots. So when I put my machine, my hoop in my machine, I'll show you now when we go to the machine, you're actually going to put your center point over there and not in the center there. Okay, I've just placed my hoop in and I've um, pulled up the design on my screen. I need to now move because if you can look at the screen there, see if I can zoom in for you. If you look where my needle point is at the moment, you will see that it's not even on the center mark where my design, where my markings is for my hoop. So I actually need to move my needle over to this point that I've, I've made a mark there for. So I'm just going to edit uh, my design. Just go off camera so you can see what I do there. There you go. And I'm going to edit. I'm going to go to move. And I'm going to start shifting my machine over to the area where I wanted to stitch. And to check if it, I'm on spot, I'm just going to remove the needle down. I can see I'm not quite quite there yet. Moving my needle up. Going one. Oh gosh. Let's move back. all the time. Almost there, I'm going to go one click up and another one. And there I am. Okay, so if I zoom in, you can see where my needle is at the moment. It's right on top of my dot, so that is where my, I'm, I'm telling the machine the, st um, the center of my design will be. Okay, after you're sure where you, your start point is on, on your um, design, you can just remove your hoop and we're going to place your fabric now. Okay, you've just set your machine. The reason I did that first is so that you can actually see where your dot is because once you've got your fabric on, you won't be able to see where your start and your end points is. I went ahead and I've cut a long strip of fabric. You can see this is, is quite long. You can cut as long as you as you would like. Um, the width doesn't really matter as long as it's it's wide enough to to hold the lace and to have a little bit extra so that we have room to cut where we need to. I also went ahead and I've ironed a crease right in the center. You'll see I folded it double and I've ironed a crease in. This is so that we can have something to line our fabric on. So when we end up with our lace, that the lace is fairly straight and not crooked in any way. Because if you, if you place your stitch, your first one, and your second fabric maybe lie like that, you will end up with skew lace. So we need something straight like a backbone to actually line up your fabric and keep it straight as far as possible. Bear in mind that the stitches will somewhat um, draw the fabric so uh, you we will need to adjust slightly as we go along so for your first um, panel which is the easy one to do is you can just place your fabric and line up your center with your center over there i'm using five or five spray to keep my fabric from slipping 
Now I'm adhering it quite well. I don't want anything to move. And then I'm going to place down my fabric. And because the fabric is, is very thin, I can actually see through uh, my line at the bottom. And you just line up your crease. with your marking that you made. You can add extra pins if you, would, if you wish to do so. But if you sprayed enough fiber fire spray, it shouldn't be able to move. So this is my first panel hooked. I'm going to go ahead now and stitch the first section. And then I'll show you how we do the next. I might mention that if you are using a colored thread, I'm going to use a turquoise a blue. Do match your bobbin thread. So do pre-wind your bobbins. You can see like I did here. And use your, your, uh, the same color in your bobbin area. We want our lace to be pretty on both sides of the hoop. And you can start stitching. You can now go ahead and do the second step. We're now going to trim away the extra fabric. Let me show you how to cut. If you look at your template and you place your template on top, we know now that this edge we don't we want it to don't have any fabric. So we need to trim the fabric from that side. So take your scissors and just make a hole. You're not going to lift your fabric. Just make a little hole and try and in just in the top section to cut a hole in. So you're not cutting through to the stabilizer at the back. We want to try and upset the um, fiber fast spray that we have be, uh, between the layers as little as possible to keep the, the stability of the design intact. So you're just going to cut right next to the stitches. And you see I'm just cutting a straight line. You don't need to go into the tiny little corners. The satin stitches that covers will actually uh, fill that up so you don't you can just cut straight and straight down again when you come to the edge the bottom here I'm just going to cut straight up and I'm going to lift this little flap here and I'm just going to open that area slightly cut away this fabric so I'm not cutting away too much fabric so that I keep the stability I'm just cutting a hole there so it's only soluble in that area and the satin edge will cover that raw edge perfectly. So you can now go ahead and stitch the rest of the design and then we'll, we'll add another piece to that. section that just completes its stitching. I've done it in blue on white so you can see the stitches and we're ready now to add our second step. You can remove this first section from your hoop. I'm 
And where the next piece needs to join, I'm just going to remove the stabilizer. Careful not to cut your fabric. Just remove the soluble so it's easier to work with. Our first piece of lace is complete. You can now go ahead and hoop two layers of soluble again in your hoop. Again, going to mark my center point. I'm also using my template again. Lining up that stitch line with the center line of my design. And I'm going to mark out my start of my design. The center of where the foot of the machine should be and the now, because we've set our machine previously for the first design, it should be right spot on again when you place your, your design back in your hoop now. You can go and double check that. If it's not the case, just move your, your needle up like we did in the first instance. We're now ready to place our fabric for the second section. At this point, I'm going to cut off this piece of fabric, so I'm just going to cut straight up and just cut up there. It just make it, makes it a little bit easier to work with. I'll turn my hoop so you can see better. Now we know that this is the start, the, the end point. We started on that side and we ended on the edge on that that specific point there so that is the point where, that you need to line up with the top marking of of your hoop so if i move this up that more uh, point there you need to line up with your top section here and then of course your center fold goes on top of your center line To make it easier, you can use a pin. And I'm just pushing a pin through the lace in the front where I want it to meet. And I'm putting the pin end through the mark where I want it to start. And I'm just going to hold it like that so it doesn't move. I'm now going to spray some fiber fast spray. You can just lightly spray for now so you can just get the placement and then we can go back and spray a little bit more to get it perfectly spot on. I'm happy with that. You can do the same at the bottom. If you can't see through the fabric, push a pin through and match it up at the bottom with your line there. And it will give you a, a better way of placing your fabric to make sure that it actually lines up where it's supposed to. But you should be able to see through your fabric as well. So you can just move it up, loosening the fiber five a little bit. That's it. 
making sure that my markings is where it should be. And then you can go back and spray more five of our spray, making sure that it's perfectly adhered and it can't move. Spray here it's a little bit more as well. Making sure it's perfectly secure in the hoop. You can add extra pins if you wish. And we're now ready to stitch the second section. It should start there. Go all the way down, then we're going to cut this extra fabric and then we'll do that side. So you can now go back and um, stitch your next section. For our next section I'm also stitching the zigzag stitches. And we can now go and trim the fabric. You can see where my zigzag start, it lines up perfectly. So if you measure it correctly and you lined up your machine, then you should be fine. And it should, everything should line up perfectly. I'm going to trim the fabric. Again, like we did last time. I've trimmed out that little piece there and you can now go and stitch the rest of the design. Our second section is finished and you can see joined beautifully and we're ready now to do the next section I'm going to do one section more with you all and then you will probably know how to continue with the rest of your fabric to make as long as you want uh, your lace so again you're going to remove from the hoop I'm going to hoop two layers of soluble going to mark on my fabric or my stabilizer rather and I'm marking my center point and also the center of bottom and the top the horizontal line Again, going to take my template and begin to be sure that you understand this, your uh, how your template works, as your line where the design will start and end, that is what you will line up with the center line that you just marked on your stabilizer. So not the center of the design, the center of the design will be offset in this case. And I'm going to mark my top and my bottom. Okay, I'm just going to put that aside and just trim away this extra stabilizer I've got here, just to make it easier to work with.
cut off this extra piece there as well. Leave the bin. Okay, now like we did last time, I'm going to push a pin through where the design stopped. And I know now where it needs to start, so I'm just going to push it in through that area. Give my lace up straight. And then my center fold line that I've ironed in, I'm going to line up with the center line I've drew on my stabilizer. Once you're happy with your placement, you can use some 505 spray keep it from shifting. Everything lines up nice and neat, and it's nice and flat. Don't worry, the fiber fast spray all washes out afterwards, so you won't have any discoloring in your fabric or anything. It was specifically made for fabric, so it's quite safe to use. So there you can see how your, your yard starts to form, and we're going to stitch the next section. If you lined up your machine from the start in the, in the correct point, you don't need to every time adjust, as you will just restitch the same file every time the start point will be offset according to where, where we want it placed on your design like I previously said if I line up my template here with where I finish stitching the, your center uh, point will be um, in that area offset of your center line so I hope you guys all understand uh, what I'm trying to explain to you here it's actually quite easy to do once you get the hang of it and you understand how um, the markings line up. It's fairly easy to, to make yards and yards of lace and have them perfectly meet up. Um, as soon as you will see some puckering at the moment, but once you washed out your stabilizer, um, the lace will relax and you will have nice, smooth, soft, flat lace like you saw on the pillows. I'll just show you the pillow again. This is the lace on the pillow, so you can see it's, it's very soft and pliable. And the back is neat as well because we used the same color at the back, your same thread color, and you don't have any stabilizer. So that's why we use soluble, so we don't have um, stabilizer between the stitches and your back is just as neat as your front. Uh, I do wash my lace first before I put my little eyelets in. If you are worried that uh, maybe, because I'm not sure if, if these tools are the same in all countries, the whole size is the same. Um, if you are worried uh, or you think that when you cut, that you're actually cutting some threads, use the smaller um, eyelet rather than, than the bigger one. So just turn your wheel to the smallest one and then you can just push your hole through um, through the eyelet. Uh, just see that you miss your satin stitches and just push and you'll probably hear a little click sound as it pushes through the fabric and there you will have a perfect hole. Um, you can even afterwards you could fray check or you can use a little bit of fabric glue if you're worried that you might have caught one of the stitches perhaps just put a drop of, of glue in there. The glue um, is transparent uh, so you won't see it, um, but it will avoid for, uh, the threads from unraveling should you by any chance have um, cut through a stitch. Um, I've done quite a bit and I'm not very accurate. Um, like I said, I just 
go and cut, go and cut, go and cut so uh, fairly quickly. And I've washed mine through the machine after I've done the holes and nothing is unraveling at all. So the underlay stitches um, keeps it from unraveling. So you should be, be fine. But if, if you are worried at all, um, I would recommend just putting a drop of glue in each hole uh, just to keep it from unraveling or fray check like I say. This is the third section of my 5 by 7 hoop size lace that I'm busy stitching in a continuous way and I'm now going to cut the next area of fabric away. Actually did cut through my stabilizer there. I'm just going to. I hope you will enjoy this.